Hi team, my name is Josh Johnson and I'm the Horn Instructor at Iowa State University. This is an incredibly exciting time to audition for the Iowa High School Music Association's 75th anniversary All-State Band and Orchestra. So, here are some tips to get you on campus in November. Let's go ahead and take a look at Etude number 35. I just have a couple of tips for you on this one. Uh, one tendency that I've noticed in my students is to play this too fast. So we have to subdivide very carefully, make sure the eighth note gets the beat. So think of this in nine rather than three. I would suggest a tempo marking around uh, eighth note gets the beat at 100, 108 to 120 beats per minute. Use a legato tongue throughout this etude and feel free to sing with it. I like to phrase over the bar line and play into the lower notes as well. For me, I like to oversimplify dynamics. And <laughs> just to clarify, in this etude, piano means soft, forte means loud, mezzo forte means medium. The character of this piece is somewhat of a somber Russian men's chorus. It's powerful, yet it's very reserved with a hint of glee uh, in some of those major moments. Speaking of that, this key is in a minor key. So if it has sounded a little funny in the practice room, that might be why. There are moments where G major shows up, but don't be fooled by them. It doesn't matter necessarily where you breathe in this piece, just how you breathe. Hold out that last note for its full value, so plan carefully as you approach the last line. Let me play this one for you so you can hear my interpretation of it. I won't play all of it, but I'll give you an idea of what to start with. So that's how I like to interpret this piece. I'll let your imagination run wild on the rest of it. Let's flip now to etude number 41. It is very simply stated at the top of this piece that it is a song. Let me pull this up here. There we go. So play as though you were singing, right? Don't be fooled by the seemingly complex rhythm. Think of this as in four, where the eighth note gets the beat. Ask your private teacher or band director for help counting this one. They'll have many more coping mechanisms and strategies that, that I can demonstrate in this, uh, this video. So, um, something like, right, so we're going to think of this as in four. Watch the first line E in measure three. A lot of students want to play a G instead, so make sure you get low enough to get to that E as it goes to the F. Um, this piece is in major. It's a happy song, right? So sing it like a happy song. Play it like a happy song. Be careful in measure seven to hit the B flat and not a G. It's another one of those gridlins that shows up in this piece. Uh, as you look through this, you're going to find three or four of those. Measure nine and ten, they're not impossible. Use first and third valve and uh, try this very simple path exercise. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is go up to the F and we're going to use first and third valve to make that happen. So, try this out. So first go slow. Then see if you can get all the way up to the G. So what this is showing me is how my air is working in the high register. For me, I like one smooth portamento buzz all the way up. Another tip, tip for this might be to use trigger one, right? Um, feel free to get a little slidey in there. I think it's it's totally okay if we hear some of the beauty of the horn in these the, the harmonic series that we can use there. Um, so let me play that section for you so you can hear a little bit of it. Right here, make sure you reinstate that dynamic. 
And watch what the composer intended there over the bar line. So we really have to be careful what we see with these slurs. Okay, let's see where we left off here. So as you see, as we get down to the bottom of the page, when we get this little motive, we can use that same path exercise to get up to the A. And it becomes really easy, right? So all I'm doing through the mouthpiece is giving it the right feedback. So that buzz is converting into a sound wave and working beautifully through the horn. Count carefully through this one. One tendency, if we look down, one, two, three, four, that fifth line down, what happens, um, a lot of times we interpret those eighth notes as sixteenth notes, so be very careful about that. Take a look at the last measure. measure. Uh, all it is is a major triad, right? So one little trick we can do. So all we got to do is just finger that A with whatever chosen fingering you would like, and then use that uh, B flat horn, the trigger, to get the rest of it. Okay, so this etude is very scalar. Make sure you realize when you're playing a major scale, a chromatic scale, and when you're playing a triad. It sounds simple, but sometimes the simple things are what we overlook the most. The most. The most. The <laughs> most. So I like to do these videos relatively impersonally so you can get an idea of my personality and uh, what a lesson with me is like. So um, I'm going to go ahead and play this one for you. So I know I know that it's, it's a very tricky etude, um, but I, I want you to get a really good feel for the rhythm of this guy. So here you go. I, maybe I won't play all of it, but we'll, we'll try to play through most of it. Play the next section just so you realize it's not impossible. number 92 and let's talk through this guy. So this is by far one of the trickiest etudes that my students have dealt with um, and the ones that uh, <laughs> think they haven't mastered you know we, we dive into a lot of uh, a lot of rudimentary work on this. So just a couple of ideas on this. This is actually our fast etude this year. So typically uh, you know there's one slow uh, etude, there's a maybe a lyrical etude and then there's a technical etude. We don't have a huge amount of articulation in this, but um, it is it is marked lively and briskly. So that's one thing that I'll point out to you. Know your key signature. First, we always have to ask the question, is this happy or is it sad? This one sounds pretty happy to me. It's B major. At the double bar, we modulate to F major. Watch out for those E sharps, or sometimes I like to enharmonically spell them as Fs. <laughs> this peach, piece, this peach, See, this is the fun of a, you know, a more live recording. This piece features loads of triads, so practice those along with your scales. So we look through this, there's just triads all over the place. We either get F major, we get B major, um, then there's some minor triads as well. It's very stylistic, so make sure you're demonstrating exactly what the composer intended. I like to pretend I'm spitting watermelon seeds at my little brother with those dotted notes. So everybody practice with me. <laughs> we used to do that. Uh, that was back when it, watermelons actually had seeds. So, um, Midway through the fourth line down, you have this tricky little motive, right? So take a look at it. Um, make the big beats important, not the grace notes, but play it so we hear the grace notes. Um, isolate the different patterns and try it like this. So this is how I like to practice um, this. So this is the one, two, three, fourth line down and about halfway over where it says pianissimo. I like to get this little ostinato going. 
and feel really comfortable with that. You can hear how I'm putting the accent on the F sharp and not the G sharp, yeah? Then I like to isolate the uh, octaves. Then I'll go up. I always like to play into the bottom of the note. We always have to equalize as we go down, right? Then C sharp. And you hear what I did. I overcompensated there just a little bit, and then I fixed it just later. So when we put this together, once we practice all of those little, little motor functions that we have to learn, it sounds like this. And see, even I miss notes sometimes. <laughs> um, okay, if I were an all-state judge, what I would probably do, you see that double bar where F sharp comes in? I would probably have you start there. And then just a reminder, there's a DC or a da capo with this. So we're gonna repeat all the way back to the beginning. So that's what I would personally do. Um, for me, it would show a lot of character on how that audition hand, audition he handled it. He handled it. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> this is what happens when I try to read my notes. It's great, isn't it? Um, I, I like being a little human. So um, one thing I've noticed that my students have done, they like to retard a little at, at the very end. Um, so I, I would say, no, don't do that. We wanna play it just nice and straight all the way through. So ya da 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 right? And then no retard at the very end. Um let's see here. On the repeated octaves, and we just talked about this, da 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 aim your air a little bit more upward so it's a little bit more straight in the mouthpiece. Um we all have to find some way to pivot or, or, or move our jaw in order to encompass the full range of the horn. So um, I, a little psychological trick I like to do, I like to think of my air going a little bit more upward, so it's going straight in the mouthpiece, just like the, the air that the horn needs. So, okay. So let me play just a little bit of this for you, so you can kind of hear my interpretation. I won't play all of it, and I'll do what I, what I, what I would suggest the Allstate judge does, and start right at that double bar. You guys are gonna hate me if they actually do that, but <laughs> here we go. And then repeat to the beginning, and you got it down. One thing that's often overlooked with all state auditions are scales. Um, so let's talk about them a little bit. Don't forget about your chromatic scale. So many of my students will go into the second or third week before their all state audition, and uh, they'll forget that chromatic scale. Um, <laughs> it's the number one most overlooked thing, and it's the number one thing that can get you the most points to get you either out of the second round or into the all state band. Or orchestra. Um, know all of your scales and be able to play them beautifully. Um, can you play them slower and faster than the 88 marking? Can you do more than two required octaves? I think those are very important questions for us to ask. So one exercise I, I have my students do, um, especially as we start our all-state prep early on in the year, um, I'll definitely have them come in and play their scales. So it's very simple. I'm going to play just a few for you, uh, but look how quickly this can go by. So I'm less than 20 seconds in and I've already played three scales. So uh, about a minute and 15 seconds is where my students get them by the time they audition for Allstate. So um, try it out. I'm laying out the challenge, the Johnson All-State Scale Challenge. If you uh, want to get cute with this, uh, why don't you go ahead and send me a, uh, a video of you playing them in under a minute and 15 seconds. I'll send you a sticker of our studio mascot, Sumo Guy. Okay? Um, so, what, here's a couple of other ideas for it. Once you've scrutinized the etudes, scales, and your solo, start doing mock auditions. Play for everyone. 
Um, say, hey, mom, hey, dad, can I play for you? Uh, find your friends. Be like, hey, can I play for you? Play on Zoom. You know, call your grandparents and be like, hey, uh, let me perform this for you. Um, do it at school. Do it in front of your band directors. Do it in front of your band. Um, get in front of your peers and say, hey, um, this is what I've prepared. And be proud of what you prepared. Um, sometimes you don't even have to do it for feedback, right? Um, so you do your own work in the practice room, and it's just the act of knowing what your body's going to do when you get in that pressure situation. Here's the deal about the human body. We can't really control it. It's going to do what it's going to do, but we can predict its behavior um, so we can be more prepared when our body goes a little crazy. Um, the last thing I'd like to say is uh, I'm always happy to offer a free in-person or Zoom lesson to any prospective students at uh, Iowa State University or I'm, I'm teaching at the University of Northern Iowa right now. So reach out and I'd be more than happy to uh, set up a lesson with you just to hear, hear you before you dive into Home State. Um, happy practicing and I look forward to meeting you on our campus in November. Feel free to stop by my office. It's uh, Office 141 in, in Simon Estes Music Hall. Um, let me know you're coming and I'll make sure I'm here to, to greet you. But uh, have a great time and uh, we look forward to seeing you in November.